Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright from Econ Course Companion. And today, a really sh quick video focusing just on what the shapes are of the revenue curves um, in Theory of the Firm. And this video, of course, is part of the Theory of the Firm Key Term Series, which I hope you find super helpful just to get the language in your head because you need it in order to talk Theory of the Firm. Um, and there's a lot of language. And so this series is designed to just give you little bits and pieces to try to help you make sense of the overall picture of Theory of the Firm. All right, so let's take a look at these curves. The most important thing that you realize is that we're dealing with four market structures in theory of the firm, okay? Those are perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. Those three, rather, those four market structures can actually be divided into two different groups. One, price takers, and there's only one market structure in that group. Okay, and that's perfect competition. So price takers, perfect competition. What does that mean? It means that they must take the price that's given to them by an outside force. The other three market structures, which is on the next slide, we'll take a look at it in a second, they are price makers, which means that they have the ability as a firm to decide what price they want to sell their good at, right? So those are monopolies, monopolistic competitions, market structures, and oligopolies. Okay, so first let's take a look at price takers and the market structure. And the reason this matters is that the, 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 the revenue curves look very different um, on, in, in the price takers market structure than it does in the price makers market structure. Okay, so here we are, revenue curves, perfect competition. Yeah, here is the regular um, uh, graph that we're going to use, not just for revenue, but also once we merge the cost curves, they're going to go on top of this. But when in operating in perfect competition, that's a market structure where the firms that are in that market structure, they have to behave a certain way. These structures dictate behavior of firms, just like the structures that you operate in as a human being dictate your behavior. When you're at school, you behave a certain way. When you're with your friends, you behave a different way. When you're with your family, um, you behave a different way. You know, when you're hanging out with people you don't know, you operate and act a different way. So firms have to operate differently in different market structures. That's a really important point for you to think about, okay? So if a firm is operating in perfect competition, then guess what the curves look like? They look like this, okay? In perfect competition, the demand is always going to equal the average revenue, but because firms are price takers, marginal revenue is also going to be the same. So let's Use an example to kind of bring that to light. Well, think about a foreign exchange desk, a kiosk at an airport. When that person who shows up to work is wondering what the price is of the goods that he or she is going to sell that day, do you know where she looks? At her phone. And you know what the phone does, or maybe the computer, but you know what the phone does? The phone is connected to the internet, and the phone is giving that person working at that kiosk the price that they must sell their pesos for if someone's going to buy it in dollars. So I live in Chile, so you know, one day the price is going to be 650 pesos to one dollar. The next day, that woman will show up, and she'll look at her phone, and she'll say, oh, hey, check it. The price changed to 670 pesos to one, and that's the price that she must sell her pesos at in relation to a dollar no matter what the quantity is and because no matter what the quantity is there you're going to end up with a perfectly elastic demand curve and because demand always equals average revenue in this case also every for every output or every peso sold that woman at the kiosk is going to get the same price which is going to be five dollars so marginal revenue and a price taker's market structure, which is only one, perfect competition, is equal to average revenue and demand, okay? So remember that, price taker's market structure, this is what the revenue curves look like. Make sure you think about the fact that there are three of them there, demand curve, average revenue, and marginal revenue curve. Beautiful. The other thing is what's total revenue? Well, because... <clears throat> Total revenue is always a function of price times quantity, and there is a consistent price, then, then the total revenue curve is going to um, be increasing at a constant rate, right? So if the output is seven, 
right? For $35, the output will be seven. So obviously, right, the price of this is going to be $5. So if the person sells 10 at $5, the, price, the, the total revenue, rather, is going to be what? $50, okay? So there's a quick look at the revenue curves of perfect competition. If there's some terms in there you don't understand, you don't understand what the average revenue is or marginal revenue is, go to the previous video and check out the key terms for revenues, and that will help you. All right, let's take a look at what happens, not in the price taker's market structure, but in the price maker's market structure. All right, this one's a little bit, um, a little bit less clear, maybe, a little more intimidating to look at from the beginning. But here we are at revenue curves in monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly, okay, where the, the firms are price makers. And that means that if, you, if firms operate in these market structures, they can behave more like we're used to in economics, which is they can set the price, right? And as a result of that, you're going to have a situation where you are going to have, and I'm going to, I'm going to go over here, ignore this marginal cost curve. This is a cost curve. Just ignore that. I like the fact that it's there, and I'll talk about what that means in a second. But when you sit down to figure out what the revenue curves are for price makers, you're going to draw this diagram, okay? Vertical axis with price and cost, horizontal with output, and then you're going to draw your demand curve, downward sloping, normal demand curve, where price, uh, where demand equals average revenue. And then the marginal revenue curve, because of the relationship between marginal and average, is always going to descend at twice the rate of the average revenue curve or the demand curve. And you must draw it so that it goes past zero, okay? Because at some point, marginal revenue is going to decrease. Beautiful. Those, that is right there, boom, stop it hold the presses, that is where right here, right, these two lines, that is what the revenue curves look like in um, the price maker's market structure, monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly, okay? Ignore the marginal cost curve just for a second, all right? So that's pretty cool. Those are the two, right? And, and I'll tell you right now, when you draw, when you get the profit and when you get to all the market structures, what you want to do first, of course, is draw the axes, and then you're going to draw the demand curve equaling average revenue, and you're going to draw the marginal revenue curve, and then you're going to stop, okay? And then there's some things here that are pretty interesting, okay? If you translate, if you move for a second, um, what we're going to focus on is where the marginal revenue curve crosses um, zero, or when marginal revenue is zero. Okay. If we move over to this graph, this is all coming to us from Jocelyn Blink. These are very good graphs. Take a look at what we have over here. This is a similar thing, right? We have the same, the, the slope has changed, but we have a demand curve that equals average revenue. We have a marginal revenue curve that is decreasing at twice the rate. And we have a point right here where marginal revenue equals zero. That is a very important point for firms because at this point right here, which is also, of course, that point right there, this is the point where three things take place. Number one, marginal revenue equals zero, obviously. But at this point right here, the mar the, this represents the revenue maximizing quantity, okay? The revenue maximizing quantity for this firm, which is 10. How do we know that? Because the marginal revenue is a function of the quantity sold times the price in the marketplace. And this, this 25 units, or that 20, the price of $25 and 10 units will give this firm an, a revenue of $250. Okay, so the revenue box I like to think about is when you, when you see MR cross zero, that is the revenue maximizing point. Go up to the demand curve, which is always right above it, go over to the horizontal or the vertical axis, and that is the revenue box. And let's see if I can draw it in here, it's pretty small. Um, that is the revenue box that will give this firm the most revenue. Okay, and of course, what is that revenue? Well, it's always, total revenue is always price times quantity, and therefore, look at that. That's where it's maximizing price. I'm sorry, cheese, maximizing revenue. Total revenue curve, total revenue is, is, maxima, is maximized, okay? And the total revenue curve in the price maker's market structure um, is shaped like that, like this. And that is because as... 
um, as, as we work towards the revenue maximizing point, which in this case, it, which is always where marginal revenue crosses zero, we have an increasing amount of revenue being created. But as, we, as the marginal revenue crosses zero, then revenues begin to decrease, okay? And you can see all of that right here. The other really important point right here to, to, to make is that <clears throat> where marginal revenue equals zero, where you cross the demand line, you will find the unit, unit elastic point or the, the, the point of unit elasticity um, for this particular product or where price elasticity demand equals one. And if you remember back to your elasticity studies where PED equals one, that's profit maximizing or rather revenue maximizing point, right? It's the most amount of revenue that this firm can generate um, um, in the marketplace, okay? So when we move forward, Okay, and this is something else you need to realize that when when we move forward into these actually looking at at not just the revenues, but putting also the costs on these diagrams, many of these curves are we're not going to represent them. Okay, so like the total revenue curve, for example, it's not going to show up again. Why? Because to put it on there would just make it you know, the graph more complicated. I mean, there really is a total revenue curve that we could draw that would go up like this on this curve, but we're not going to draw it because it's not necessary, all right? Likewise, um, where marginal revenue crosses zero here, if we were to go up to that point, right, and over, this would be the revenue maximizing point for the firm. But we're not going to draw that in there because, unless we're asked for it, um, because it would just add to the confusion, Okay. Cool. So there's an overview as quickly as I could possibly do with still giving you as much information as I can of a price maker's market structure and the price make it maker's market structures are monopoly, monopolistic competition and oligopoly. And these are the revenue curves that um, what the revenue curves would look like in those market structures. So here's the thing. Listen, if you divide it out between costs, you should have a handle on that. And then think about the revenue curves, and you have pictures in your mind of what the revenue curves look like, then, then the logic is kind of clear. Okay, the next step here is profit, right? Well, revenue, right? Revenue minus cost is always going to give you your profit. Or if your costs are higher than your revenue, guess what? You ain't making any money. So these are critical little pieces. If you divide out cost, revenue, and profit into small little sections, this is sort of like where you get the revenue curves, and you're like, okay, cool. Now I can put on the same graph some of the cost curves, and magic is going to happen, and you're going to be able to figure out and represent if firms are making abnormal profits, normal profits, or maybe even operating at a loss. All right, my friends, be good to one another out there. Take care of yourselves as well. I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.